Each of the large flowers on Bellifers has its peak of flowering at a slightly different time of the year, uh, and each has its own distinct habitat preferences, which reduces competition between them for essentially the same suites of pollinators. The flowers of wild carrot uh, begin to appear around the middle of June, and it reaches the peak of its flowering towards the end of July, which is round about now. Uh, and it has all the characteristic features of a typical umbellifer. Uh, it has the, the, the distinctive fern-like leaves, uh, the umbel inflorescence, which is comprised of eight or nine of these very characteristic uh, trident-like bracts, uh, and the subsidiary umbels also have little rows of much smaller knife-like bracts around them. Um, other distinguishing features of the plant that enable you to separate it from other superficially uh, similar umbellifers are the, well, the bracts, of course, for start, but the, the, the rough, prickly nature of the stem itself is quite distinctive, uh, and of course, so also is the smell. The flowers attract an enormous number of short-tongued insects of all sorts solitary bees and wasps, hoverflies and soldier flies, and beetles, and, not infrequently, a predatory crab spider. One American study counted 334 species visiting wild carrot, but not all of these would have been pollinators. One of the most distinctive features of wild carrot is the ovary, which is located at the base of the flower, uh, and at flowering time is covered with soft bristles. Now, one of the most interesting things about the plant is that once fertilization has taken place, uh, the, the bristles on four of the seven ridges on the ovary lengthen, they become harder, and they become hooked. And at that stage, each of those four ridges looks a bit like the back of a diminutive stegosaur. And as the fruits mature, you can see the way the umbel closes in on itself, and as the little fruits get bigger, uh, they become a bit like diminutive hedgehogs. If you open up the flowering head or the fruiting head later on in the season, in the, in the autumn for example, it's like looking into a nest of hibernating baby hedgehogs. One unusual feature is that a lot of the umbels, if you look at the centre, uh, there's one or a small cluster of completely different flowers which are purple in colour due to the presence of anthocyanin in the petals. Um, Nobody is entirely sure what the function of these is. One theory is that these are decoy insects uh, to attract other insects to what presumably is a, a good source of pollen or nectar. These clusters of fruits uh, will open up later in the autumn and these little diminutive hedgehogs will be able to hitch a lift on the fur of passing animals. Now, wild carrot enjoyed a, an enormous range of applications uh, in earlier times. Like so many other members of the carrot family, it was first cultivated for its aromatic fruits and leaves uh, and only for the roots rather late in prehistory, and the modern carrot only appears sometime around the 10th century in Afghanistan. But this is the ancestor of the modern carrot, uh, selectively bred over tens of centuries to reduce the bitterness, to increase the sweetness and the taste, and to increase the size of the taproot and diminish its woody core. And when you handle a plant like this, the ancestor of the domestic carrot, it gives you a sense of what an extraordinary human achievement it was to be able to take this taproot here and by slow, patient selection over countless generations to be able to produce this.